Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 15 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. I just wanted to say a couple of quick things before today's episode. First of all, I actually graduated from high school earlier today, and in reflecting back in my time in high school, I realized that I really owe a lot to all my fan supporters and subscribers out there. You know, I've only been doing this YouTube thing for the last year or so, but you guys have really kept my head up in, you know, times that weren't so great for me. You guys have kept me motivated, I work really hard because I want to, you know, help you guys, I want to make you guys happy, uh, and, you know, YouTube doesn't last forever, it's not a career, Pokemon doesn't last forever, it's also not a career, uh, but what I know that I'll take away is my time here on YouTube and you know I'm not saying I'm quitting or anytime uh, soon but in reflecting back on my time in high school I know like you know I owe so much to you guys for supporting me every step along the way I really feel like I have the best fans and supporters in the world so thank you guys so much I really can't express my gratitude in a video or in words but just know that I really appreciate all that you guys have done for me even just a nice comment on a video means the world to me and you know when I was at Massachusetts regionals this last weekend and I met so many of you especially even parents and little kids who watched my videos uh, that was just so inspirational to me and you guys are the reason why I continue to do this and it makes me incredibly happy so thank you, you know, high school was a crazy ride. I'm looking forward to the next chapter of my life, but I know you guys will be part of it regardless of what I do, so thank you. On a different note, the second thing I actually want to talk about is a VGC documentary. I know, exciting. So Wolfie Glick, Ray Rizzo, and I uh, have been working on this project, and it's basically a VGC documentary we want to make on competitive Pokemon and the VGC scene, and how it's really grown in the last couple of years, and we want to tell the stories of all these different players, and basically show that they're awesome people, and what they do in real life, uh, and ultimately we want to, you know, shoot US Nationals and the World Championships and lead to this event where only one person can win, um, and, you know, in order to get this documentary done, we need to raise some money, so if this sounds interesting to you at all, check out the link in the description below. Uh, it's a Kickstarter and I'll probably be talking about this for the next month or so, but we're trying to raise some money to get this happening. We have some very legitimate people working with us and I think the quality of production will be very good if it manages to become a thing. So please share support if it sounds like something you're interested in at all. Uh, we really want to emulate some of the other documentaries that have helped out other esports like League of Legends, uh, you know, Road to Worlds, which I honestly loved, or the Smash Bros documentary. And those two documentaries have really introduced me to those competitive games. So we're hoping that this will be able to pay Pave the path for new competitive Pokemon players. Um, so check out the link in the description below. We're trying to raise money and any support will be greatly appreciated. Anyways, enough about all that. Let's actually jump into today's episode. We are currently sitting at a rating of 1791. So still rocking the sand team that we've been using throughout the last two weeks. Of course, really fun. Uh, I didn't get to actually upload an episode yesterday since I've had a lot of senior activities, basically saying goodbye to all my friends and whatnot. Uh, but we should be back. I'm um, not exactly sure about my entire upload schedule just because my summer is super busy. It's mainly two weeks in which I'm on vacation, but I'm probably going to at least try to get some things pre-recorded, if not maybe just one game per episode, but at least keep you guys busy while I'm gone. I'm probably also going to upload some of my games from Massachusetts Regional since I had some really good games. So I'll see what I can do, but we finally find an opponent to start today's episode. Thank you for bearing with me with the introduction there. I just had a couple of important things to say. 1690 rated player from Japan, and my opponent here is rocking a team of Scrafty, Amoongus, Swampert, Gengar, Heatran, and Zapdos. So, interesting here because my opponent doesn't have a particularly, you know, uh, popular Mega Evolution. I think the two options are Gengar or Swampert, obviously. Uh, Mega Gengar was actually on Wolfie Glick's winning Massachusetts regional teams this past weekend, but here at Parish Trap, uh, hilariously enough, Gengar, Amoongus, and Scrafty is a Parish Trap combination, so I mean, I, I don't, I'm not expecting Parish Trap here, but it's definitely a possibility. Uh, also, maybe my Mega Swampert it could, can be a thing here. Uh, it's just weird, because normally you want to use a Mega Evolution to take advantage of its ability, so, you know, not sure what the Swampert's doing here. It also could be a Swampert like Angel Miranda's earlier this year, uh, which is just kind of supportive coverage but let's see what I want to lead with I think Salamence is immediately appealing um, just because of how much damage it does against Gengar, Amoongus, Scrafty, all those so I'm leading I mean, I mean I'm obviously inclined to lead with Salamence I like Salamence Rotom Wash I think I'm not affected by Intimidate at all with those two um, I do like that I, I want Amoongus still for the Scrafty, the Swamp or the Zapdos switch ins into Amoongus for the last one I'm going to obviously want something to beat the Heatran I'm leaning towards Excadrill here a Tyranitar can make sense with Superpower but the thing is I should be able to outspeed Heatran with Excadrill and just if it comes to the late game just get an Earthquake off it's not like Edge Slash is so important in this matchup that I really need to bring it so I think I'm going to decide on Excadrill as we are going to go into today's episode after a very long introduction so thanks for bearing with me and as always if you enjoy Road to Rank please share your support by leaving a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it. 
So my opponent here is going to be leading, I believe, with the Scrafty and the Zapdos. Yep, and that's going to set off the Intimidate immediately. That's not really too much of a concern. Uh, I feel like Rotom Wash and Salamence is quite a solid lead matchup for me here. Uh, Salamence is Intimidate, obviously going first because it's faster. So I'm wondering what kind of Scrafty set this is, because Scrafty typically is built one of two ways. It's either Assault Vest or Lumberry. Uh, you know, Rotom Wash here definitely appreciates the position it's in, but uh, Salamence doesn't really like going up against a Zapdos, so I'm probably going to want to switch that out. Uh, now looking at it, I actually don't have any great answers to the Zapdos, which is slightly an issue. Mm, let's see. I think I'm going to switch into Amoongus immediately and go for the Thunderbolt onto Zapdos. I basically need to start chipping damage off at it to put it in Dragon Pulse or Rock Slide KO range. Um, I should have thought twice about going up against Zapdos here. Uh, He's going to go for the Fake Out onto, yep, the Amoongus, which is even better for me because, of course, the Rocky Helmet damage to, does do some nice damage to Scrafty. He goes for a Tailwind, yep, so that's a fine turn one for me there. Uh, I get Salamence out of a precarious position and manage to get some free damage off here, so I'll take that. As uh, that Zapdos doesn't look like it's very uh, bulky, so that's good for me. Uh, this next one, I'm actually going to try to put the Zapdos to sleep, and I'm going to go for the, do I want a Will-O-Wisp? I kind of want to just Thunderbolt Scrafty. I feel like Scrafty's probably going to switch out here into maybe something like Heatran. So, uh, I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump here. Scrafty can't do very much. I mean, it can knock me off. Oh, but he does have Roost with Zapdos. Okay, so that confirms the Roost. Doesn't switch out with either. I'm fine. I'm just trying to figure out what sets my opponent's uh, really running here. As he goes for the Taunt with Scrafty. Very nicely done. Wasn't expecting that, though. That is a move that some Scrafties do like to carry. Hydro Pump obviously connects here with Scrafty. Fortunately enough, uh... Yeah, so I don't think it's a Zolt Vest. It is probably Lumberried, which is obviously good information. But the Zapdos is going to be really difficult to deal with. So let's see what I want to do. I could Hound the Scrafty with Offense this turn. But he might be scared to switch into anything he has in the back now. So I think this next one, I'm actually going to Giga Drain the Scrafty and Protect Rotom. Um, yep, he stays in with Scrafty. That's perfect. So I'm basically trying to stall out this Tailwind right now. As he goes for a Thunderbolt, onto Rotom, and the knockoff, onto Rotom. Yeah, perfect. So I knew I could make that play, it was relatively safe. Giga Drain comes out, obviously doesn't do very much against the Scrafty, but more importantly, um, basically forcing Tailwind to end here. A uh, question here is, should I switch out? Because he's going to go for a Thunderbolt and a knockoff. Uh, I don't really have a great switch out, switch in, honestly, but the thing is, I don't want to lose my Citrus Berry either. It's kind of the main issue. So we've seen Thunderbolt... We've seen Roost, we've seen Tailwind. I guess the last move would probably be Hidden Power Ice, which is kind of bad for me here. But I think what I'm actually going to do is Giga Drain the... Oh, uh, no, 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 no. This is what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to double switch here. So he's going to probably Thunderbolt and knock off the Rotom slot. And uh, I'd rather have him knock off my Sash, but not do too much damage. Yeah, so I'm going to pull the double switch here. Uh, he switches out Scrafty, which is fine, because this is the last turn of Tailwind. And uh, it is going to be Heatran coming in, so this ends up working out quite nicely. Uh, though part of me does wish I went for the Hydro Pump there, uh, just because, you know, that was the prediction I was making early on in the match. And I think my, if my opponent didn't have Taunt on this uh, Scrafty, he definitely would have made that play. But I'm going to pull the switch here. This does, gives me, does give me excuse me a slightly better offensive positioning. Depends on what Zapdos goes for here. For example, if he HP, I see Amoonga slot, I would be done for, since Salamence would go down. Nope, he goes for Thunderbolt onto Exedro. Perfect. As Tailwind Peters out. So that works out perfectly. It's exactly how I wanted things to play out. The main difficulty here is he's probably going to be setting up another Tailwind. So I think I'm just going to predict that. I'm just going to Dragon Pulse and Rock Slide here. Um, because there's very little reason to stay in with Heatran. Especially if you're going up against Assassin's Exedro. Uh, now the main issue in this lies in the fact that... Mm, dealing with Zapdos and Heatran is kind of problematic, especially that Zapdos which gets bruised. So I'm going to hound it with offense. If my Excadrill happens to be faster than Zapdos, a flinch here would be so good for me. Um, but I'm not banking off it. And he doesn't protect with that Heatran. Wow, good play on my opponent's end. Uh, predicting me to pre uh, predict that. So I am faster with Excadrill. I do get the Rock Slide off. Now a flinch on the Zapdos I think could basically win me the game right now. Obviously it's a bit early to tell. He does have the Citrus Berry, so he's Citrus Berry and Roost. Interesting. Uh, but there's no doubt he's going for a Heat Wave Tailwind here. And I do get the flinch on the Zapdos and the double flinch. Wow. And he has leftovers with Heatran. Very interesting. Uh, so I obviously do feel a bit bad there. I, you know, I wouldn't have minded him getting a Heat Wave off, but he made the better play there, and I feel like he deserves to be rewarded for it. But, you know, that's what happens when you use Rock Slide. So I'm going to try to use everything I can to, you know, take that to my advantage and win the game now. Uh, I'm going to go for, let's see, he has Scrafty in the back. 
So I'm going to Hyper Voice here in case he wants to switch out into Scrafty and Rock Slide. Because I, I could definitely see the Heatran switching out into Scrafty here. Uh, looks like Heatran is going to switch out. Uh, looks like it's going to be Scrafty. So I do think even if I didn't get that double flinch, I would be in an alt-right position. I mean, obviously, he would have gotten presumably the Tailwind and the Heat Wave off, which would have been so bad for me. But I still had Rotom Wash in the back, um, which I feel like obviously is a fantastic matchup here. Uh, and if his last Pokemon is the Mega Swamper, then... You know, Amoongus obviously checks that. So I'm going to be able to predict the Scrafty switch in here, pick up the knockout. A rock side here does connect with Zapdos. That should also pick up the KO. So I figured he might try to, you know, bait me into going for a Dragon Pulse rock side, hoping that after the Intimidate and spread damage, I wouldn't be able to knock out Zapdos. Uh, but I knew that with the Focus Sash, I could play a bit more safely with the next good girl. But still got to feel a bit bad since uh, he did make the better play by not protecting with Heatran. But, you know, I went for rock side, kind of hoping that if I were to get a flinch, that'd be so good for me. My opponent's last two are Heatran and um, Swampert. And that's exactly why I had Amoongus and Rotom Wash in the back. So I feel like Rotom Wash was so good in this match that it could have really helped me out. Uh, which is why, you know, even without the double flinch, I do feel like I was in control of this match. But my opponent's just going to forfeit. Uh, you know, I do got to feel a bit bad though since, once again, you know... You want to win Pokemon a lot of the times, at least in my personal perspective, off outplaying your opponent as opposed to getting lucky. Um, and obviously, you make moves based off RNG and whatnot. Um, but I always feel slightly guilty when I take my, my opponent makes like better plays than I did. Uh, and I feel like that one turn basically was huge because if I went for the Earthquake and knocked out Heatran, Amoongus would have won me the game basically outright. Um, so that was a really smart play on my opponent's end. But that's Pokemon for you. So we're just going to jump into the second match of today's episode. And it does put us over 1,800. So let's see if we can continue to stay up there in this next game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I actually drew on Tyranitar. Uh, you know, one reason why I actually used these two at regionals was because I knew I'd be going through a large amount of Swiss rounds. And I knew that a lot of teams are ill-prepared for the speed control that Tyranitar Excadrill kind of has. Um, or really, basically the speed that they gain. Uh, not very many very Pokemon not very many, that was a tongue twister, Pokemon can outspeed them, nor can they knock it out. So, like, there are a few Pokemon that gives those two trouble. Obviously, fighting types like Unkelder, like Terrakion, like Scrafty, but then that's what Amoongus is there for. That's why Amoongus, uh, you know, con compliments, wow, really tripping on my words today, compliments this team so well, right? Because with Rocky Helmet, you can redirect those physical type fighting taps, fighting type attacks away from Tyranitar next to Drill. Our second opponent of the day is going to be a 1631 rated player from Japan. And my opponent here is rocking a also a pretty cool team. Salamence, Breloom, Blaziken, Edge Slash, Hydreigon, and Bisharp. So uh, probably a Mega Salamence here, though Mega Blaziken, definitely a possibility as well. Let's see what I want to do here. Mm, I kind of like the Salamence Rotom Wash lead. With Tyranitar in the back. Tyranitar can be decent with Ice Punch and Superpower. Hmm. Amoongus is also decent here. Hmm. I kind of want Tyranitar, especially because I presume Breloom has Focus Sash. So I can break the Focus Sash with Sandstorm. Hmm. Maybe Tyranitar Excadrill here once again. I mean, it did do very well in that last game. And Aegislash, the main reason I don't want Aegislash here is because um, he can outspeed me. He's got two Dark Types, a Ghost Type, and his own Aegislash and Breloom, which can spore me. Blaze again. I don't think Aegislash is a call here. The, the question is, is Amoongus a call? I don't think it is against a Hydreigon and a Breloom and a Blaze again. So I'm going to lock in here. I honestly really dislike my matchup. I think my opponent definitely has the advantage, but I'm going to just try to catch my opponent off guard. Uh, of course, he doesn't know that Rotom Wash is super speedy, uh, able to outspeed Bisharp and Breloom, I believe. So I'm going to try to use that to my advantage here. Uh, actually, no. I mean, I, Breloom should be jolly, so I think he'll be able to outspeed me with Breloom. But we'll see. Otherwise, you know, decent. I think the edge of here also causes some issues because I can't effectively one hit KO it. Uh, of course, I can bait it into sword form, but that's not really uh, enough, obviously. Especially if it has wide guard, which I definitely suspect that it has. I think most edge of slashes typically go for the wide guard build nowadays, as opposed to the substitute build, which uh, was more common. Though uh, Barris Akos, also known as Billa, did use sub lefties, uh, I believe, in the recent Germany Nationals, where he finished in the top four. So, definitely still viable, but uh, at this point, when I see an Edge Slash, I always assume Wide Guard, so I'm going to probably want to play around that. If anything, the Breloom is going to be the most difficult thing to deal with. Uh, what I'm going to want to do this first turn is probably switch out, set up the Sandstorm, and then try to just knock it out with a Hyper Voice. But it really depends on what my opponent leads with. Uh, however, I do feel like Salamence Rotom gives me a good amount of options regardless of what my opponent brings. 
Uh, looks like we are going to see the Blaziken and the Bisharp, so pretty solid lead on my opponent's end. Obviously, I walked into the Defiant, but, uh, you know, as you know, my uh, Rotom is faster, so I can just Will-O-Wisp it. So I'm not too concerned about that, but at the same time, you never really want to give the Defiant boost. Uh, let's see... Now, I could just double target Bisharp with a Flamethrower and a Thunderbolt. Actually, however, I think if you're smart, if you're my opponent here, you're going to protect with the... You're going to double protect this first turn. Hmm. So I could make a really good play if he just chooses to double protect, because I can switch into Tyranitar Exedra and just Earthquake. Huh. I really kind of want to do that. <laughs> Though he might not protect with Bisharp, which is the main issue. Um, I guess he would go for a knockoff onto Rotom though, right? So I can go into Excadrill here and Scarfed Heart in that slot. I'm gonna pull the double here. Um, I, if I were my opponent, I would really double protect this first turn just so I can HP Ice the Salomon slot, because he's probably not expecting a faster Rotom here. So Rotom switches out before either of his, though I mean, Rotom Wash is faster, uh, given that I do a lot, invest a lot of speed. So I do successfully set up the sand, which means Excadrill will be able to outspeed my opponent. The question here is, what does this Bisharp go for? Okay, so Blaziken protects, which I was anticipating. It's probably the Life Orb set. What does Bisharp do? Yep, the double protect comes out and it fails. Perfect. So I at least made that call correctly. The main issue here is, uh, I actually just real- Well, it's interesting to see Blaziken, Bisharp, and Breloom all on the same team, because Breloom typically carries his Sash, but then that means, uh... Well, okay, I'm definitely Earthquaking here. I think I'm going to switch back out into Rotom Wash. Uh, I do want to conserve the Tyranitar here, because Choice Scarf Tar is quite good against my opponent's team. And I don't want to give the Bisharp, obviously, another Defiant boost, because that means even if I burn, I'm putting myself into a bad position. And let's see what he does here. Oh, he just goes for the Sucker Punch onto Excadrill. That's a good play. Uh, and he's not Life Orb, so I'm guessing he's Focus Ash. But I do get the Earthquake off as I outspeed the Blaziken, so that should knock it out. Yep, and it looks like the uh, the Bishop does hang on with 1 HP, so it is Focus Ash. However, the nice thing here is, of course, my Rotom is faster than it, so I can safely go for a Thunderbolt the next turn. Um, so, you know, I'll take that, given that my lead matchup wasn't the best. I knock out Blaziken, which was one of the bigger threats to my Salamence in the back. So, we'll see what comes in from my opponent now. Uh, maybe Breloom? Uh, that would make a lot of sense. But, once I knock out Bishop, then Mega Salamence wins the game against Breloom. So... Not too worried right now. I uh, haven't seen my opponent's Mega Evolution either yet, obviously. Uh, as that is going to be Breloom coming in. Okay, now, given that I'm guessing Blaziken is Life Orb and Bishop is Sashed, uh, I think he might actually be Choice Scarfed, which could be problematic. This is one of the cases where having a Moongus would be really good. Um, dang. This is actually really bad. I think I'm going to double protect here to scout out what he does with that Breloom. Because that's what the most important thing is. The question is, does he Spore? Does he Bullet Seed? Let's see. And I'm guessing he's going to... Oh, he Mock Punches Excadrill. And knocks off Rotom. Now, hmm. If he goes for that play again, then I can win the game. Just because I can knock out the Bisharp. But I don't know if he's going to do that again. So, I should have just attacked there, I guess. I'm going to go for the Earthquake here. And I'll go for the Thunderbolt onto Bisharp. Wow, it was kind of frustrating then, because I could have just had a very good chance of winning this game last turn. But, the fact that Breloom Mock Punch makes me question, I don't think it's Choice Scarf then. Uh, which is good, obviously, because he can't Spore me here. Or, I mean, he can't Spore me, but, um, a Choice Scarf Spore would actually be so difficult for my team to deal with. And he does go for another Mock Punch! So I think I'm, my Rotom Wash here is going to be able to catch my opponent's Bisharp off guard and knock it out with the Thunderbolt since of course I'm faster. Unless this is a Jolly Bisharp, but that's not going to be the case. That's exactly why Eevee Rotom Wash to outspeed Bisharp, so I can lead Salamence and not feel too bad about giving a, a, a Bisharp a Defiant boost. So that's perfect for me here. I'm very happy about that as we both take Sandstorm damage. The main issue here is Breloom can still knock me out with a Mach Punch. I'm obviously going to bring in Salamence here to get the Intimidate. Um, and I'm guessing his last one's also Salamence. Yep, it is. So now we've got an interesting game at hand. Uh, I'm wondering what kind of Salamence he is also. Hmm. So, my Salamence outsped his, which means I might be faster. The question here is, it's the Protect game. Uh, it's kind of a 50-50, I think. Well, do I Hyper Voice here? Try to knock out the Breloom? Or do I just go for the Dragon Pulse onto the Salamence? Or I can protect with my own Salamence here, but I don't know if we speed high, which is also somewhat of an issue. Uh, I could also protect, switch out into Tar, switch back out into Salamence, but I don't think that's a good enough play. 
Oh, this is tough. I really want a Dragon Pulse here since most Salamences don't carry Dragon Pulse. He might get caught off guard by that, but... Hmm. Dragon Pulse. And Will-O-Wisp onto the Breloom. Okay, I guess I'll go for that. Let's see how this plays out. I'm just wondering if he predicts the Hyper Voice. The thing is, I could have Hyper Voice safely to do over 50% to Salamence, but... Hmm... Yeah, I don't think I made... I mean, it'll come down to what kind of Salamence that he is here, basically. And that's the trickiest thing against fighting against other Mega Salamences. Okay, he doesn't protect with either, so a Hyper Voice actually would have just won me the game. Is Dragon Pulse able to do enough to knock out his Mega Salamence? It is, nice. So that actually should be game right there. So he didn't protect with either. A Hyper Voice there could have won me the game. Uh, he's going to go for the Spore onto the Salamence slot, and that is perfectly fine by me. Yeah, so obviously uh, Jolly Breloom able to outspeed my Rotom, but Will-O-Wisp here actually misses the Breloom. Uh, I can make this game a bit more interesting, actually. <laughs> okay, so I mean, the thing is, he, he can't knock out Salamence, which is his main issue, so I'm just going to Hyper Voice, and um, I'm going to protect here with Rotom just because... Well, I mean, at this point, yeah, he has no way to win, given that Breloom has no way to hit my uh, Salamence. So, uh, it is going to be another win for me in today's episode. That I feel that first game, definitely feel a bit guilty for that double flinch. But, once again, Pokemon's Pokemon. But, yeah, two g quick games for you guys uh, on the shorter end today. So, you know, it was a really long introduction, but thanks for listening. Once again, you know, it really means a lot for you all to be, have tuned into my videos, really, for the last year or so. Uh, and I really owe you guys a lot. So, thank you guys so much. Uh, as always, if you enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I am now going to backtrack on the things that I was working on earlier, so that speed should finally be uploaded soon. Now that school's actually over. Um, and I do have a busy schedule, but I'll figure everything else out. But you know what? That's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Alright, peace.